Back to another guitar session with Jason Carey. Today we are talking about Cold Hard Bitch by Jet. So thank you for watching and checking in on our regular Wednesday night uh, play guitar now with Jason Carey at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, and tell your buddies because we are on live right now for another. I don't know. It's like 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We run for about a half an hour most of the time. Sometimes it's a little shorter, sometimes it's a lot shorter, sometimes it's a little longer. Sometimes we run right on time. But I'd like to thank tonight, I'd like to thank my buddy uh, John Bibber for uh, sharing his set list. And I'd also like to thank Studio Carey and Augusta Man for hosting us. And uh, we hope to be back there again soon. Uh, and let's see. So I guess we're, we'll start right out. The beginning of the song has this really, if you have questions too, we do keep a live chat, so go ahead and uh, ask questions. We have a moderator here who will direct me to your questions, so don't hesitate. If we don't get to your question by the end of this session, don't worry. We will follow up and we do, uh, we do find you. So. Uh, well, I'm not sure we find you. We don't, we don't run out there and like literally find you unless you, you know, give us your address and blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> we probably won't do that. So we do follow up. So uh, like, share, subscribe, tell your buddies we're on for the next few minutes if they do like Cold Hard Bitch by Jet. So without further ado, let's get going. So we're going to start with a nice, I think it's an open A string. I'm assuming everyone's in tune, but in case we're not, Here's the standard tune. We're in uh, A440. I have a little distortion on my guitar, so when we're tuning, I like to roll that volume back a little bit, just so it's not so burry sounding. E. Here's A. This is just a really quick D. G. B. And E. So when you're tuning, when you, when you come in with a, for a private guitar session with me, we typically would take five minutes to tune up and just kind of practice breathing and slow it down so that we can actually absorb what we're talking about and practice in a learning environment. Uh, you know, this, this particular medium, you can watch and keep up or not. And if you want, you can go back and look at review the, the video afterwards and press rewind. That rewind button is a really great feature, which we can't do in a live one-on-one -on -one lesson. So this is a fun thing to do. Um, we'll keep right on going unless you have questions. Stop me, okay? So we're starting. Uh, we should We should before we start practicing every day. We should practice five times a day, or five times a week at a minimum. If we want to progress, we want to practice, or if we want to maintain our current status on the guitar, five minutes a day. That will keep us where we are at for, um, for our technical prowess. If we wanted to increase our facility on the instrument, we would practice longer than five minutes a day, and we would practice more than five days per week. So as long as we're getting with it five times a week, five minutes a day, that's fun. Usually if you can sit down with a guitar, you end up spending more time with it anyway. Hours roll by. Uh, a friend of mine talked to me about this earlier today. Hours roll by and it just seems like moments. So the first, oh, we should warm up. You know, the old one, two, three, four. You 
You could practice long tones. Practice um, making each string or each tone sound exactly the same loudness and exactly the same length as each previous tone. If you like, try experimenting with different pickup selections. Fatten up the tone a little bit. And you would practice this with alternate picking as well. It's just down, up, uh, down, down, down. We could do down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So we're alternating between down strokes and up strokes. And we get faster and faster at that. What we want to do is start on position number nine. When we get to the top of nine, go down to position eight, seven. And then six, and then five, four, three, two, and one. In a perfect world, we would go back up to position nine where we started from whence we came. Okay, but for tonight, we won't do that. But when you do practice that in your own time, be sure to practice your breath. <sighs> okay. First notes of cold hard bitch. And we have a nice palm muted sound. So you could karate chop the bridge. Don't break your guitar, but you could karate chop the bridge and give it a little, a little bit of that meat of that, you know, that karate chop edge of your palm. And if you come out too much under the guitar, you just choke the strings out. So we, we don't want to do that for this particular song. It's fun for other songs, but not for this song. And there I don't have any palm mute, so as I slide out onto the string set, I have varying degrees of palm mute. So I have sort of a light palm mute going here, and I'm stopping, I pluck the A string, stop on the D string on the next smaller string. And I'm going to count eighth note grid. One and two and D and four and one and two and D and now you say the word the letter T for the word the number three. Just shorter and faster. It means the same thing musically. One hey, oh. so one and two and D and four and one and two and D and four and one and two and D and four and one and two and and then a second guitar comes in. <laughs> That's basically an old blues riff off, right? So this, uh, I don't know, everything's in America's old blues uh, music just kind of modernized or evolving as we come down the line. So it's that old blues riff that we knew, right? So open A and fret two on the D string, and then we move up to fret. We're gonna keep that first finger on fret two on the D string. And I'm plucking those two strings. And I'm resting for this time, um, when we play this little riff, we're plucking through the A and the D strings resting on the G. So it's fingers one, three, one, three, four, three. And we're on frets two and four and five. That's the second guitar part. Now, the first guitar part before that second guitar part enters, we've got that nice D chord on the top. Play it up here, and you could play that D chord on the two middle strings on fret number seven, but it doesn't sound as bright as it does if we played frets two and three on the G and B strings. So we're, we'll do a couple of open A strings, right? So 
So two and three on the G and B, and then the two middle strings on fret two with a, with a double stop. We're stopping two strings with that first finger. And then we're gonna pull off an, another blues lick, open A, fret three on the A, bend it oh so little, okay? We're pulling on it a little bit just to give it a little tension. And in the meantime, this, this second guitar part starts behind it. All right, so we have those two guitar parts going simultaneously. And you could pick whichever one you prefer to use. It's probably a good idea to learn to learn how to do both. The next thing that happens Oh, between each one of those chord stabs, we do go back to refer to the all muted A string. So check that out. And we are uh, on Facebook. We are on YouTube, so don't forget you're watching our YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe that, but also check us out on, fa on Facebook. We, before we jump into the verse, Hit, we're hammering on that G5, right? So we're looking at fret three on the low E string, that second finger, lay it over, choke off that A string. We don't really want it in there. We don't mind that, that little harmonic squeal in there because it's you almost don't hear it. Two open middle strings. Which are a little out of tune. But, you know. Close enough for rock and roll. Uh, and we have open two middle strings and then fret three on the B string. And in some cases, that third finger can lay over the top two strings and grab the you know third fret here and the third fret here. And we'll go ahead and just kind of, you could just kind of do the 1980s rock bell and G5 and let it rip. Or you could just kind of do the, you know, the jet thing here and just kind of hammer on those eighth notes. One, and two, and And he's screaming. He's ready to go. He's tearing it up vocally. And then we start the riff. So let's take a quick look at that. That's going to be the A5 and so it's open A, fret 2 on the D and fret 2 on the G. So it's that beautiful A5 chord we've been dreaming about, right? So here it is again. Rock and roll guitar, babe. So we've got that nice 2, 3, and 4, and 1, 2. Okay, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and we're gonna pick up that low open E string right here, right? Right on the end of one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. And we just do another blues riff here, man. It's just open low E, fret three on the low E, and then open low E again, and then we jump. D5, and then back to A, okay? 
One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two. It's really hard to count. If you're not used to counting on the guitar, look out because this is going to require some practice. So we'll slow it right down just for a minute. We'll get really slow and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. It doesn't sound much like the song at that tempo, does it? But when we get faster, we only practice it slowly to get going. And we practice it as slowly as we need. Just give ourselves plenty of time. Take the time that we need just to enjoy what we're doing. Have some fun with it, you know. Have some fun. Like, share, and, you know, like, share, subscribe this channel. You know what I mean? You know, do it. You know, it's fun. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two. So we'll, we'll only incrementally, as we practice and we get want to get faster, we have to do these Min, you know these incremental increases in speed so we'll start right and then we'll speed it up a little bit we'll speed it up a little more I think it's that's where the tempo of the song is so that might take hours could take a week to get it up to that tempo if we're if we're brand new to the concepts okay the key is to give ourselves that time needed Yeah, but the, by the time we get to the verse, uh, the last time around, right, we just kind of he leaves uh, the guitar player leaves the band really leaves a little space for the voice to just kind of shine. Um, and then they do the riff. So leave plenty of space for the vocalist to shine. But the verse is all about getting that little G bent so that we can kind of push it back up to that A chord, right? So the musical alphabet consists of A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, right? So musically or alphabetically, G goes back to A. So what we're doing is we're helping to, we're not sliding, we're not using one foot at a time, we're not, we're bending that string to sound like A, we're not really doing that, we're kind of bending it to sound almost like we're getting to A and then we slam back into the A5 chord. Okay, so that's the beginning. Okay, so every time the verse comes up, we're going to leave a big hole right there for the vocalist to shine in. Okay, so E, and then G, and then G5, G5, the one that we just played. E5 is just open little E, fret 2 on the A, and fret 2 on the D, and then G5, and then the transition up to D5. Okay, so we have that D5 like we're playing. Okay, sweet home alley, whatever it is. And then uh, that D5, like blue 
on black, kind of, right? We just kind of go back and forth between that D note and that C note. Ding, 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 ding. Could be. Right? But it's D5, the whole chord. To a single note C. So we keep that those two fingers there because we're going to keep switching back and forth between the two. Chord, single note, chord, single note. Important, the last C note is bent a little bit, whereas all of the other ones preceding that are not. You can hear that that little that little bend and that little bit of tension that draws us back to that A chord. Right? Oh yeah. So the chorus part is is uh and then F F5 fret one any questions okay good fret one but if you do have questions don't hesitate we have a beautiful moderator on board today very smart knows how to communicate those questions to the guitar player here okay so don't hesitate to ask so fret one on the low E string fret three on the A fret three on the D you gotta break out that big stretch that first position stretch here you know good luck Make sure you do those warm-ups before we start practicing the guitar, you know, do all of that stuff and it'll stretch our fingers out and get us ready for this that kind of thing. Fingers one, three, and four on frets one, three, and three on the E, A, and D strings, okay? So this F5 is a little different than we normally would use it. So we're using frets one, three, and three. Um, we remove the first finger, one and two, and to uh, open up the open low E string. And that G5 that we were playing like this is now like this because we're coming from that F5 like this. So we're moving that in parallel mo uh, motion. So finger one and three, they stay two frets apart. One, two, up, one, two frets, up one string. That whole block gets moved up two frets from F to G. Right. So it's one, the chorus goes like this. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, Two, three, and four, and one. Okay, let's take a look at how it's going to finish up here. it pretty much when we get out of that first chorus it's just just do this okay so there's a little interlude a little linking section that's just a right so we turn the volume the it's almost just clean guitar it's a little overdriven but it's cleaner than when he kicks it back, kicks it back in, so it's A five. Okay. Back to the verse.
so that section's pretty cool. So we're starting with A, one and two, single note G, A5, single note G, and then G pushes up to D5, and then D5 walks down to F sharp, single note, to G note, nice little walk out. We're getting ready to wrap it up here, folks, so if you have any questions, if you haven't already liked, shared, and subscribed, go ahead and do so now. We also have a wonderful song that we'd like to promote. It's called Song for Eugene. It's to observe gratitude to those who serve to hold that blue line. So uh, if you haven't already heard the song, please check it out. It's a recently released song by uh, Jason J. Carey, and you can find it on iTunes. Google Play, uh, Spotify, blah, 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 everything, you know, all the musical outlets on the internet. And so please support it, uh, buy it, like it, listen to it, and share it. Um, so the next, the last part of the song is. Nice, big, fat A5 chord, single note G, and then G again to a big, fat D5 chord. And then D5 chord again, then we're walking back up from F sharp to G to A5 again. And then we do that, that little slur from G5, or G note, back up to A5. I think that's what we got here. And then we go back into the... Kind of the intro lick of the, of the song. Thank you.